In this video, we'll be talking about long volumes and capacities. Uh, so we'll be discussing five main topics here. So the first uh, two are related. Uh, we'll be talking about lung volumes and lung capacities, and we'll move on to physiologic dead space and anatomic dead space, in fact, actually. And then we'll move on to ventilation rate and forced expiratory volume. So let's begin with lung volumes and capacities. And then, like I said, the other three. All right. So with lung volumes, we have this uh, curve that uh, we have different variables here that tell us something about uh, our breathing. Okay, let's begin with tidal volume here, which you see going up and down here in a smaller curve. What's tidal volume? Tidal volume is the volume uh, in which it's inspired or expired with each normal breath. So as we were normally breathing, you're sitting here just breathing. This is what we call tidal volume. Okay, well, then we have what we call inspiratory reserve volume, which is this peak here going up there. And um, this inspiratory reserve volume is that volume that can be inspired over uh, and above the tidal volume. So as we saw, it's above the tidal volume here. And this is used uh, during exercise. So when you, normally, you, we wouldn't have this, this jump. When we're sitting down, we're usually just breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, out, in, out. Exercising or breathing in, and then we move into the next thing, which is expiratory reserve volume, uh, which is the volume that remains in the lung. Uh, sorry, I apologize. It's the volume that can be expired after the expiration of tidal volume. Okay, after the expiration of tidal volume, so it's, it has to dip below tidal volume. Okay, and then we get back into re residual volume or tidal volume. Now, talking about residual volume, what's residual volume? It's the volume that remains in the lung after maximal expiration. So after we maximally expired, we have here what remains in the lung. It's the residual volume. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and move and talk about the capacities. Okay, before I move into lung capacities, I wanted to give you a little mnemonic to remember, which is uh, what we call litter, L I. T E R, so that you have this uh, in order so you don't mix it up. So, lung capacities now. Uh, lung capacities, we have what we call inspiratory capacity, and that's between uh, the inspiratory reserve volume and the tidal volume, and it's the, the sum of those two. So, the capacities are usually are just pretty much the sum of, what, of the volumes that we have. The functional residual capacity, that's the sum of the expiratory reserve volume and the uh, residual volume so expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume and uh, what's what's the functional residual capacity it's called functional residual capacity it tells us something it's the volume that remains in the lung after a tidal volume has been expired after this tidal volume has been expired this is the volume the FRC is the volume that remains uh, in the lung okay so it includes the residual volume, and uh, I needed to tell you this earlier, but residual volume cannot be measured using spirometry. The spirometry is what gets us all of this. It's a machine where we breathe in. The functional residual capacity, because it includes the residual volume, uh, it cannot be measured by the spirometry, because the residual volume, can, there is no way to measure with the spirometry. Okay, let's move on to the vital capacity here. Uh, what's a vital capacity? It's the sum of the tidal volume, okay, and uh, the inspiratory reserve volume, okay, and the expiratory reserve volume, okay. What what, what does that mean? It's the the volume of air that can can be forcefully expired after maximal inspiration, okay. Moving on to total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the total of everything, which is the, the sum of all four lung volumes. Okay, it's also the volume of the lungs after maximal inspiration. So we need to get this straight. It includes residual volume, so we need to remember that, that also this wouldn't be measured by the spirometry. Okay, moving right along, we will be talking now about dead space. With dead space, we have two. Dead space. We have something called an atomic dead space, and another thing that's called physiologic dead space. Uh, what's an atomic dead space? An atomic dead space is that volume of the conducting airways. What are the conducting airways? It's such as your, you know, the the pharynx, okay, and uh, the trachea. Those are the conducting, uh, uh, the conducting airways. Okay, it's normally about uh, 150 uh, milliliters. Okay. 
What is physiologic dead space? Physiologic, so that tells us that it has to do something with physiology or the, how the body works. And it's a functional measurement. It's, uh, it's, divine, it's defined as the volume of the lungs that does not participate in gas exchange. So that's why it's called dead space. So it's defined as the volume of the lungs versus here is only the conducting airways. The conducting airways here is the volume of the lungs that does not participate in gas exchange. It's a, uh, the physiologic dead space is approximately equal to the anatomic dead space in normal lungs. Okay, uh, they're usually equal. So then, then that is important to know in, a, in the next calculation that I'm going to be bringing. Okay, uh, the physiologic dead space also the, it it can be greater than the anatomic dead space in lung diseases. So that's when there is something called ventilation perfusion mismatch or VQ mismatch, which I'll talk about in a later video. So let's see how uh, the physiologic dead space is calculated. Physiologic dead space is calculated by, so the VD is the physiologic dead space and that's measured in milliliters. It's, it's measured by having the tidal volume times the uh, PCO2 of alveolar gas, which is measured in millimeters of mercury, and that's usually equal to the PCO2 of arterial blood. Okay, so the alveolar gas is equal to the arterial blood PCO2. And that's minus the expired air CO2, okay? And that's all over the alveolar gas, or again, the same thing as arterial PCO2. So we need to know this equation for uh, further calculations, which takes us into the ventilation rate. So for ventilation rate, we have two ventilation rates. One, it's called minute ventilation. And minute ventilation is pretty much just the, the, the minute to minute ventilation is what we're doing right now. We have what's called alveolar ventilation. What's minute ventilation? Minute ventilation is uh, equal to tidal volume, which we talked about just a second ago, and then uh, times the breath per minute. Alveolar ventilation, on the other hand, is the tidal volume minus dead space. So we have to account the dead space and when we go down the alveolar. Okay, this is more of an estimate of how we're breathing totally. This one is more accurate towards the alveolar times breath per minute. So let's do a problem. I'm gonna. You can uh, read the, through this and pause, and then we'll continue. So I'm giving a second to pause now. This person with a tidal volume of 0.5 liters, breathing at rate of 15 breaths per minute. The PCO2 of his arterial blood is 40 millimeters per mercury, and PCO2 of his expired air is 36 millimeters per mercury. What is the rate of alveolar ventilation? So you know, before we get to alveolar ventilation, we need to calculate the dead space. So Calculating that space with the equation that I just gave you, we plug and chug 0.5, all that, it gives us 0.05 liters. And then we subtract that from the tidal volume which we were given and multiply by the breath per minute and then we get 6.75. Okay, that, that covers ventilation rate. Now let's move on to the last subject of this video which is the forced expiratory volume or FEV1. Forced expiratory volume is important because it's the volume of air that can be expired in the first second. That's why it's called FEV1 and it's the first second of forced maximal expiration. Let's say that again. So FEV1, it's the volume of air that can be expired in the first second of a forced maximal expiration. Okay. Normally FEV1 is about 80% of uh, forced vital capacity. Okay. So that's expe it's expressed as FEV1 over FVC equals 0.8 or 80%. Okay, and we use that in order to tell us about diseases. So we have FEV1 here, FVC in different states. Let's talk about the normal one. So normally, like I said, if you were to calculate this, you take this divided by this, this would be, so if you take FEV divided by FVC, that will give you about 80%. Okay, and an obstructive disorder such as an asthma, Okay, FEV1 is reduced, as you can see, FEV1 is reduced, and also FEVC is reduced. But FEV1 is more reduced than FVC, so that gives us an FEV1 over FAVC, which is decreased lower than 80%. Looking at the fibrotic or uh, and diseases of restriction, uh, and restrictive diseases in lung, we have FEV1 and the FEVC are reduced almost equally. So that gives us either a normal or an increased um, FEV over FVC. Okay, this covers uh, our topic of uh, lung volumes and capacities. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you.